Hello and welcome to the workshop. Appreciate you stopping by to chat sneakers with us for a few minutes. If you have not already done so, make sure you subscribe to the channel. There's also a little bell icon, ding. You can hit that and YouTube will notify you whenever we upload a new video, which is buckets. Almost every single day. Almost every single day. You can also find me on Twitter and Instagram, bang, at Mr. Vomer Simpson. And if you enjoyed today's video, please do hit that thumbs up button. It really does go a long way. It helps the channel continue to grow and all of that good stuff. Now. The moment we've all been waiting for. And by we, I mean mostly probably me. Well, maybe some of us. This is something that we do. Buckets behind the camera, me in front of the camera. This is something that we've been doing, Buckets, since we started the YouTube channel? Every year since we started. Every year since we started. So that's 2012. This is our eighth rendition or seventh? How does that work with the math on that? I'm not sure. Not sure. We've been doing them since 2012. It's become a bit of an annual thing. It's a tradition at this point. The 10 best sneakers of the year. Now, the one thing I do want to say before we jump into the list is this is obviously an opinion based list and we're only including sneakers that we've had in our hands down here at the workshop you know it's tough to judge a sneaker unless you really have it in your hand i think the new balance 550 that ma leon door did was an awesome sneaker that would deserve some consideration but i was not able to get a pair uh tried to just wasn't able to uh buckets a sneaker that you love is the nike air max 95 og neon for sure. Those released this year, that would be, I guess we'll call them honorable mentions. Okay. So I just wanted to to throw that out there, a little uh, uh, preface, preface it? Uh, pre- Precursor? Prelog. Pre uh, prelog? Prelude. Prelude. I don't know. All right. Word to Kobe with the prelude. So uh, these are the 10 best sneakers starting from 10 going up to one, according to us, mostly me. Anything to add before we jump in? No. Let's do it. Number 10, the Nike Air Max 3 Radiant Red. I mean, this is a classic. I think it's one of the best Nikes ever created, honestly. The infrared Air Max 90, when it originally released, it was the Air Max 3 Radiant Red, and Nike brought it back or recreated it true to its original form and name. And I just think these are too classic to leave off the list. I know it's not a new sneaker. I know it's not something we've never seen before, but I just could not have a top 10 list without these on it. Number nine, the Nike Air Force One Low Pendleton. Now, I am biased, obviously, because I created this sneaker on Nike by you, previously known as Nike ID, and I love the Pendleton option. This is a pair that I made, but I saw so many cool pairs that different people created, different patterns, different color blocking. I just think it's an incredible sneaker, and I understand that it's a Nike ID, so a lot of people maybe would not include them on this list, but I think that makes them, in a way, more dope because we got to create the versions of this sneaker that we wanted. I mean, everything about these, the Pendleton materials and the Air Force One, I don't know. That duo, it just seems kind of uh, peanut butter and jelly-like. It's a very, very good combo. Number eight, the Nike SB Dunk Low Strange Low. Buckets, this is your sneaker of the year, probably? Yes, for sure. So Buckets loves these. I went back and forth between this pair and the Travis Scott Nike SB Dunk Low because I love those as well. But ultimately, I find myself gravitating more towards these. I just do. I love the materials. I love the colors. There were so many dope Dunk Lows this year, but I had to give these a spot in the top 10. I just had to. Like I said, it's Buckets' favorite, and uh, I like them a lot as well. Number seven. The Sakai Nike Vapor Waffle in black. This is a sneaker I was very unsure about when I first saw pictures. Now, the first pictures that released, they were a little grainy. They, they weren't too hot. I loved the Sakai Nike LDV Waffle from last year. In fact, I loved them so much that it was my pick for sneaker of the year in 2019. Some of you may remember that video. They took the funky heel, though, and they went even a step or two further. They made them extra funky. And like I said, initially, I was unsure about that. After getting them in hand, Super dope, very unique, and just everything from, again, the materials, you'll see that's a that's a common theme with me for my picks. I like those nice materials, the construction of the sneaker. It's just a home run in my opinion. Number six, the Air Jordan 1 High Dior. 
This is a sneaker, people either love it or hate it. This is probably the hype beast pick, right? I get it, I do. But I think the Jordan 1 is so good in and of itself. And there were other cool colorways too. The mocha pair was really nice, but ultimately collaborating with a designer brand like Dior, the materials, again, the quality, the whole rollout for the sneaker and the way they did it. I understand a lot of people will say there's too much hype behind these, they aren't that good, but I just could not make a top 10 list for 2020 without including these buckets you're not so much a fan of these not so much a fan i think they're incredible i don't know it's it's everything that's good about the jordan one and they have just such a high end premium feel to them i think they're really really dope number five the off-white air jordan 4 sale cracking into the top five now from this point on almost any one of these sneakers could probably be number one they're mostly interchangeable depending on which day you ask me, but these are awesome. Again, the materials, Mutabella. It's a Jordan 4, which is one of the better Jordan silhouettes of all time. Buckets, it's your favorite. Yes. It's not my favorite, but it's definitely up there. Now, this was a women's release, so I actually have not been able to get my size, but in hand, they are really, really good. Super, super classy. These are a grand slam. Number four, the Nike SB Dunk Low J-Pack Chicago. I think you could almost call 2020 the year of the Nike SB Dunk Low, I wouldn't even argue with four or five of someone's top 10 picks being all Nike SB Dunk Lows. There have been that many dope colorways to pick from, dope collaborations, from the Grateful Dead pairs, to the Chunky Dunky, to these. I think this is the dopest pair personally. I think they're the most wearable. I think they're the most classic. And yet somehow they really flew under the radar compared to those other pairs I mentioned. I don't know, to take such a classic and clean colorway like the Chicago and execute it perfectly on the Nike SB Dunk Low, it's hard to beat. Number three, the New Balance 992 by Joe Fresh Goods another collaboration i said this could maybe be considered the year of the nike sb dunk low it could also probably be considered the year of the collaboration so many dope collaborations as i mentioned and again this pair could easily be sneaker of the year if somebody picked this for sneaker of the year i would not argue it the color blocking the different materials from the peanut butter leather on the tongue to the pink suede on the side the burgundy mesh I just wish these, like a lot of the sneakers on this list, I just wish they were a little more accessible, but such is life. It's an amazing sneaker. Tip of the cap to Joe Fresh Goods. These are phenomenal. Number two, the Union LA Air Jordan 4 Off Noir. Yet another Jordan 4 and another collaboration. This pair is a 10 out of 10. It's easily my most worn sneaker of the year. It seems like I've worn these for a few months straight at this point. I basically have not been able to take them off since I got them. You know, some of you remember that we unstitched the folded tongue because we hated the way that looked. I definitely hated the way that looked. And now they just look so damn good. Union LA obviously did the Jordan 1. My mind's getting a little hazy. Was that last year? I think it was the year before. The year before. Okay, so they absolutely smacked that one out of the park. And then they followed it up with these. Both colorways are dope, but I think that the Off Noir is the one. I think it's the one. Creme de la creme, you could say. And now we are to number one. Buckets, do you want to do a drum roll? Ah, uh, not really. Brrr, bang, bang. The number one pick, the Nike Kobe 6 Pro Tro Grinch. No explanation necessary, quite frankly. This is my favorite Nike sneaker of all time. Normally, I would not have a retro, or in this case, a pro-tro, as number one on the list, but I just had to with these. This is a sneaker grail for me. Losing Kobe this year has made them even more of a grail. Some of you may remember earlier in the year when I actually bought the original Kobe 6 Grinch. We got the sneaker in, the package came in, we uh, did the video, I think it was the next day. It was a Sunday morning. Buckets, you and I, you'll definitely remember this. We posted the review video at eight in the morning. A couple hours later, we went to play basketball. And when we were done playing basketball, we got the uh, tragic news that Kobe had passed. So I don't know. Um, I just feel even more connected to this sneaker than I already did. It is definitely a special one for me. And I had to put it at the top of the list. Kobe forever. Buckets, 
You're not going to argue with that? No. Okay. Strange Love, Kobe Six Grinch for you? Yeah, I mean, you can almost put nothing over the Kobe Six Grinch. Okay, there it is. I, I, I got buckets to switch his pick. Success. And there you have it. The list is complete. The top 10 sneakers of 2020. I think it was actually a year filled with dope releases. I think Nike and Jordan brand pretty much dominated, as you can tell from my picks. New Balance did some really good things. Puma did some really dope stuff. I spoke about this in a video not too long ago, but I think Adidas fell off pretty hard and it'll be interesting to see what they do in 2021, see if they can bounce back a little bit. But 2020 was certainly dominated by Nike and Jordan brand, in my opinion, when it comes to the top 10 anyway. Um, buckets, anything to add for you? No. Leave a comment below and let us know how you feel. What are your thoughts? What is your favorite sneaker? What's the best sneaker to release in 2020? What did we leave off the list? Did we snub a worthy sneaker? And which of our picks do you agree with? Do you agree with all 10? Is there someone out there who has the same brain as me and has this exact top 10 list? Leave a comment below and let us know. Always love to hear from you. Thank you for watching. You are very, very appreciated. We will be back tomorrow, manana. Same time, same place right here at the workshop with a brand new sneaker for your head top. Uh, I don't have anything else really other than saying this has been a crazy year, 2020. Uh, that goes without saying. And I just want to thank you all for your support, for rocking with us. Uh, my brother and I, Buckets, I know I speak for you behind the camera. Uh, we just, we appreciate you very, very much. This is something that we love to do and uh, you make it possible. So uh, words don't even really do justice how we feel and how grateful we are. So uh, thank you. Just wanted to say that. And uh, until next time, adios.